I'm Mike Missinelli. A little bit, uh, we're going to join uh, John McMullen. Will join us live from Lincoln Financial Field. But right now, Mark Farzetta joins us Oof. on the set. Farsi with the player you can bank on, presented by First Trust Bank. What do we have today, Farsi? I mean, how do you not choose a guy like DeAndre Swift going out there and making sure he got you the yards? Look, I, I understand that it's the big sexy. Okay, it's the big sexy right there when you talk about the running back actually going out there and getting the yards. But you could easily go with the offensive line here because the minute they started trusting that offensive line, the minute Brian Johnson decided that it wasn't working for whatever reason in the passing game, it was going to work in the ground game. And that's where they started really dominating this football game when they just decided in that second quarter, we're going to run the ball down their throat. And that's exactly what they did. They had the big boys up front making that push, and DeAndre Swift was having a lot of fun being able to run through huge gaping holes in that offensive line. Did you see Lane Johnson? The DeAndre Swift ripped off a run, and Lane Johnson was looking over the sideline like, keep rolling them, baby. Just keep rolling them. He's done that before. Oh, yeah. He's done, he did that back with Doug Peterson when he felt like they were abandoning the run, and they know they can get that push up front consistently, Far and he did it again today. You know, it was an old-school drive, by the way. 16 plays. 13 were runs uh, on that drive to make it 10-7. to 7. That's called grinding it up a little bit. You don't see that very much. There's not an offensive line no. out there that doesn't want to run the football no. because they know if, if they can dominate that way, when they turn around and have to or want to run the ball, it's a lot easier for them to pass, pass block. Seth, that's called that old-school smash-mouth football back from the 70s and 80s. You know, run left, run right, run middle. And if they can't stop, you keep running the clock, man. That's a thing of beauty. And I know Farzee gives the, you know, the player of the game to DeAndre Swift, and I can't argue against that. But i got to start with the big dudes up front, man, because some of the holes they opened up in this game tonight were big enough to drive a Cadillac through. And they saved the team today. And they saved they the team. absolutely. I mean, no look, question. All the turnovers that were created no by the question. defense and by special teams yes. of, all, of all units was great. But every, the consistency of this team – it's such a great thing when you look at this Philadelphia Eagles team, whenever they have struggles, to be able to default to an offensive line that people can't blow up, that they do the blowing up right. and make those holes right. for their running back no matter who it is. I mean, Rashad Penny, I'll say this, left a lot to be desired. You can understand why he was inactive in week one after watching him today. But DeAndre Swift, man, when you combine that speed and being able to get to the line of scrimmage as quickly as he was able to do tonight, that was fantastic. Yeah, I'm not sure they have much of Rashad Penny, <laughs> uh, but there was a sighting of him today. Conversely, the Minnesota Vikings rushed the ball nine times for 28 yards. So uh, we knew what we were going to get from Kirk Cousins. 31 completions for Kirk Cousins. Jefferson, 11 for 159, 13 targets. Uh, Jordan Addison, 72 yards on, on three catches. And they got the ball to Hawkinson uh, seven times, but only for 66 yards. He didn't really burn them that, that, uh, uh, that bad. And K.J. Osborne had, had three completions for uh, 34 yards for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, but let, let, listen, let's face it. The Eagles have beaten now two teams that are not in their class, right? So um, this is what you're supposed to do in the NFL. You're supposed to take care of those teams that you know you're better than. Uh, so so what are we worried about exactly? When, when they get to a good team that they won't have enough stuff, especially with the way the quarterback is playing right now? Well, I feel if they get to a better team and they continue to play like this, um, it's not going to look good for this team. You know, they've capitalized on a couple of teams that are weak in certain areas. When it came to the New England Patriots, the Patriots don't have any offensive weapons outside of Ramondre Stevenson and, of course, Zeke Elliott. When you look at this Vikings team, they have a good passing offense. They don't have any running a running game. They let Dalvin Cook go. Look at the pedestrian-like running back. Madison's a good banger between the tackle. His role when Dalvin Cook was there was to soften up the defense for, Calvin, uh, for Dalvin Cook to hit the home run. You don't have a Dalvin Cook in that offense now. And defensively, Brian Flores doesn't have a lot to work with. You know, they gave it their best shot. He is a true disciple of Bill Belichick, but he doesn't have the personnel on the back end that the Patriots had to play the kind of scheme that they wanted to play more efficiently. So the Eagles basically, although their game was flawed in both games, they played them well enough to win and not lose. And now they, they get uh, kind of a mini buy here to, to work on some things. So uh, what do you think these next few days – uh, entail for, uh, for, uh, for Nick Sirianni and the boys? It's a, it's a mini buy. You know, you got to look at what you're doing. You got to look at how teams are playing you. And you got to come up with a remedy. And you got to come up with a way to, to exploit the defense when they put themselves in certain situations to be exploited. Like, I'm telling you right now, 
That 63-yard touchdown pass to Devontae Smith, that defense looked nothing. It didn't look any different than anything that they had shown them all game. You know what the difference is? Jalen Hurts identified by the alignment of the safety on that side that they were in man-to-man coverage and decided to attack that side. Okay. That's the best play he made all game. Absolutely. There, there was somebody in his face. He stayed in there and delivered it. Absolutely. But he has to do more of that. You know, and th- the problem is when you're not sure what you're seeing, that you, you don't know what to do with it. Okay. And Bill Belichick is a master of that. B- Brian Flores learned how to do the same thing, you know, to a certain extent. They, they had much more, much more success against what – Hurts at least did much more success against what he was seeing today than he did last week. Is that a progression? I don't know. I don't. I just don't know for sure. But I know that Brian Flores is an aggressive style coach. He's even more aggressive than Bill Belichick yeah. from from yeah. a blitzing standpoint. If you go back and you look at when he was, you know, in Miami running the Dolphins, I mean, there were times they played more zero coverage at that time than any other team, you know. But he had the horses to do it. But they understand that. I'm bringing pressure, and I'm bringing guys from a myriad of different places to force Jalen Hurts to make quick, quick decisions. The other thing I'm doing is I'm going to line guys up, and I'm going to, I'm going to move guys around. I'm going to disguise so he doesn't get a pre-snap read of where to go with the ball right now. And once he snapped the ball, you got one safety running back, another one running over here. You know, this guy dropping, this guy, you know, coming up. So it's hard for a quarterback to to recognize and understand all of that until he's seen it. So are are they changing it up, these defenses, this year against him? or Because it seemed like he made those reads last year. Because most teams give you a pre-snap read. There's only so so much that you can disguise, you know. But when you got safeties that are playing halves and they're lined up at eight yards and on the snap of the ball, they're getting back, you know, to their halves coverage. Now that presents a problem. Because he thinks that, you know, they're in something else, but they're in halves coverage. And they go, they go from a look of man coverage, like they're going to come down and blitz, to all of a sudden everybody drops out, both safeties got halves, and they're playing a cover two. i tell you what's going to happen, Seth. The better defenses they're going to face this year are going to take a combination of everything that they've seen from both New England and Minnesota and utilize it. They're going to add to what they already do extremely well and add that. And I'm, I'm picking up on something that you said earlier when you said, like, Jalen is seeing ghosts right now. And if, it, if the word gets out that you can confuse him compared to the fact that he was near flawless most of last season, then it's on Nick Sirianni and Brian Flores to spend additional time with him, as good of an athlete as he is, to spend additional time with him in the film room behind closed doors to help him see some of these things that he hasn't been able to see the first couple of games. I will continue to say this, d Gun. I think yeah. the Eagles need to get much better. You know, and, and, and Mike asked, you know, so what do they do with these 10 days? I think they need to work on the timing of their screen game. They've got to implement a screen game to the running back to make it look like a screen game. They got to do a better job of their tight end screens to got it. They must have ran two or three screens to got it t- tonight for like two or three yards. That shouldn't happen with a guy that athletic. And they didn't run it with Swift. They didn't run a screen with but Swift, right? that's my right? whole point. Yeah. I, where, where, where's the screen game against a team that's overly aggressive mm-hmm. at you? Because you know the best way to deal with aggressive teams, the best way to slow them down, hit them with a screen. You hit them with a scream, that, slow, that s- slows all the pass rush down because guys have got to pay attention to it. Now, if you're running the ball the way they ran tonight and then you turn around and throw a little screen game in it, now you're cooking with gas. But they, they, they've got to kind of figure some things out and come up with some solutions with this little mini buy that they got because they can't – once they get into the meat of their schedule and start playing better football teams than yeah. the last two that they played, yeah. they're not going to survive playing like this. I'll, I'll tell you the most important thing they have to do between now and then is get healthier. You know, Bradbury is coming back Thank from that sir. concussion. We don't know the status of Avante Maddox with that shoulder. We know N'Kobe Dean is going to miss at least three more games uh, before he's ready to go. So they've got some holes to fill. Well, and Maddox can. just can't stay healthy. I mean, it's it's well, he can't. It's, yeah. a, it's a sin Part of that he game. can't stay healthy. He but plays with reckless abandon, yeah. and, and it cost him in a lot of ways. And he's a tiny guy. So far as you, if you're assessing this team right now, like I, 
I mean, I, I don't. I, I think I'm in a kind of a holding pattern <laughs> at, at this point because you know they've won two games and good teams. So you're relieved, like I said. I guess I, I guess I'm relieved. I, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not thinking that they're in trouble by, by by any means, but they certainly haven't been that impressive. But again, they're beating teams that they're, that they're better than, and they should do that. Yeah, Mike. Mike no. All right, they're two and zero. Oh. We feel great about them being two and zero, oh, but we feel even better about correcting the mistakes over the next eleven days. You have the next two Sundays off, which is great. I agree with Seth. I agree with Gunner. Mike, I agree with you. You got to get back to the drawing board when it comes to this offense. You got to make sure that Brian Johnson is on the same page as Jalen Hurts, and Jalen Hurts is going to be able to diagnose whatever they're throwing in front of him. It gets said every single time something like this happens. The league looks like over these first two games with Brian Flores and Bill Belichick that they have adjusted to Jalen Hurts. Now Jalen Hurts with his new offensive coordinator and play caller have to adjust to what the league is doing to him. I got confidence they'll be able to do that. We'll go back to the mini bye. They'll have an opportunity to do it coming up against a weak team on a Monday night football game against the Buccaneers. All right, let's take another break. Kayla will be back with the Diamond Debate and John McMullen will join us a little later in the program live from Lincoln Financial Field. It is the Pond La Hockey Eagles post game show live from Ocean Casino and we're back after this. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Champions on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. 